if I were to describe night three in one word, I would call it non-stop. <laughs> Phase one is a go. From the moment that Jenkins pulls the trigger, there's 57 minutes of continuous action. Making it from an action fanatic standpoint, it was Christmas. It's Winston, Jerome, all our other characters kind of spread out throughout the hotel, trying to pull off this impossible ice. And it's just chaos. Season on Scott. We wanted to make sure that it felt John Wick specific in the action scenes. We learned really kind of the DNA of the hotel, which is nothing we've ever explored in the movies before. It's fun in that John Wick version of fun. It's like the crazier you get, the better it is. And away we go. Putting Hansel and Gretel together was quite tricky because the wig got cast first. I know I wanted the Ringo Starr hairstyle. And then this one face came up. These eyes, his face fits with that wig. I'm like, he's perfect. Well, I've only directed him once. I'm only telling him one thing. Nothing. And he took and created his own character, and there's not a misstep in there. He's very machine-like, almost like Hold and Terminator-like. <laughs> Twenty years experience doing this kind of stuff, you're still getting these insights from these experts, these you know masters in their field. It's been a blast. My favorite fight scene is between Gretel and Yen on the rooftop because it's just so intense and insanely different action. There is a huge aspect of mystery in our characters. It's all about the look, the attitudes, the movement. We know how incredible Yen is as a fighter. But Marina, the actress who plays Gretel, gets to show her real talent now. It's this crazy thing she can do with her body. It's been really a blast to work with Kate and the fight coordinators. They're incredible. They can see that uniqueness and build something amazing from you. To me, fighting is all about the underlying primal qualities we humans love to follow. Winston. I personally love the relationship between Sharon and Winston. I was just so excited for us to be able to step into these pretty iconic roles and begin to develop our storyline, our chemistry. 13th floor, that's bad luck, right? I'm not superstitious. I was like, okay, I'm Winston and you're Sharon. This is exciting. After all they've been through and the sacrifice they both made, there's a moment they have in the control room where they hug each other. They've formed a bond through a traumatic three episodes and a very violent history. And that's the beginning of that relationship you see years and years later in a John Wick film series. What, you missed him from there? <clears throat> I did something to you, didn't I? Yeah. Katie watched her entire family burn to death. That is beyond traumatic. We see this interesting turn with Katie where she realizes both her and Winston had their childhoods destroyed by this man. And it's not about going after the player, it's about going after the system, which is Cormac. She realizes there is no justice unless she creates justice. And that's what she does at the end. Boiled this scene all the way down to nothing, just looks, feeling, expression. And Katie got her vengeance. Winston, closure. Be seen now. Where does Winston end up at the end of this journey? 
Winston has looked over his shoulder his entire life, and I think when the job of killing Cormac is done and the adjudicator shows up and says, okay, give me the keys. These premises are under a temporary suspension until the high table deems otherwise. He realizes, wait a second, this is gonna be the same issue. I've just accomplished all of this, and now I'm going to be catering to you again and be looking over my shoulder again. So it's a spur of the moment decision. Really, what we learn in the show is how Winston and his personality as a hotel manager, but also as a gangster, as a crime lord, as a just a great character, how does he build this hotel in his image? When you meet him at the very end, he's beginning to take on those characteristics of the Winston we know in the John Wick film series. So you see him in the final image with uh, the exact wardrobe that Ian McShane had the first time you saw him in John Wick 1, the polka-dotted ascot, the blazer, the exact martini, and you're off to figure out what's gonna be the next 25, 30 years before you see him again.